Hi, my name is John. And my name is Alice, and this is Math Videos for Parents. We help you so that you can help your child. Today, we're going to be talking about subtraction. And I had learned it the traditional way. So if I were going to do 81 minus 47, uh, I would have to borrow a 1 from the 8. So that would become a 7. So now I'm doing 11 minus 7, which is 4. And then 7 minus 4, which is 34. So I get the answer of 34. John, what's the constant differences approach? I'm so glad you asked. So in elementary school, if students have to do a problem like 81 minus 47, they might find that process a little confusing. They might not understand what it means to cross out an 8 and make it a 7 or you know borrow a 1. That might seem like mindless stuff to them. So instead, we teach an approach that's a little bit more visual and relies on mental math. So if I'm looking at the difference between 81 and 47, the constant difference approach suggests that if I add a little bit to each of these, you know, as long as they add the same amount to both numbers, I'm keeping that difference the same, hence the phrase constant difference. So if I just bump this up to 50, that means I'm adding three. Um, if I do the same thing to 81, that would become 84. So the difference between 50 and 84 is the same as the difference between uh, 47 and 81. So I can essentially turn this problem into 84 minus 50 by just adding three to both of these numbers here. And when I perform that subtraction, that difference is the same as the difference between 81 and 47. And like I mentioned, students find it a little bit easier to subtract multiples of 10. So that's the advantage here that subtraction using constant differences offers. I see, and you're making the adjustment to both numbers. So the answer you get is the same. So what this reminds me of is uh, I'm 5'11", and my friend Becky is five foot tall. So we're 11 inches different in height. If we both had two inch heels on, we would still be both 11 inches different in height. If we had three inch heels, on, like it, the, the difference would be the same because we are compensating for our height by the same amount. Exactly, that's a perfect analogy. And looking higher up into the math sequence, when students get into middle school and high school, a lot of times they will add things to both sides of an equation or write an expression in an equivalent way. So I think it's important for students at a very young age to see how adding three to both of these still preserves the overall difference and that that is something they could do later on when solving equations and things like that to to preserve the the math that's happening wonderful it also seems like it makes it a lot easier to do it in your head so i look forward to trying one next <laughs> great okay so i'm going to do 117 minus 49 Now, I, I want to change this number to 50, because that's going to be easier to work with. So I can do that as long as I also change this number by the same amount. So I basically added one in my head to this number. I'm going to add one to this number as well. So just in my head, I don't have to like borrow anything or carry a one. It's pretty easy to say, OK, there's going to be 68 left. And so um, I can see how this is uh, an intuitive way to do mental math, essentially. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, it, it's just a nice alternative to what seems to a, a child as like this mindless game of crossing out numbers and putting a one when there, there's a deep meaning behind that, you know, with respect to place value. I think this better gives them an understanding of you know, multiples of 10 and how that those can help calculations. Wonderful. Thank you, John. This is really helpful. Great. So thanks for joining our, uh, you know, math videos for parents. And we'll, we will be back with another video soon. Take care.